Welcome to a proof of the Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, Part 1. The Fundamental Theorem of Calculus, Part 1, states that if a function f of x is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, and big F of x equals the def integral of f of t with respect to t from a to x is continuous on the same closed interval and differentiable on the open interval, then big F prime of x, which would be equal to the derivative with respect to x, of the def integral of f of t from a to x equals f of x. Notice how this is telling us that the derivative of this integral is equal to the integrand function f with the change of variables to x. To begin our proof, we'll use the definition of the derivative for big F prime of x, which equals a limit as h approaches zero of the difference quotient for big F. So the next step, we're going to factor out one over h from the fraction and then write big F of the quantity x plus h and big F of x as def integrals using this equation here. So the next step we have the limit as h approaches zero of one over h and then times the quantity big F of the quantity x plus h is equal to this def integral where we substitute the quantity x plus h for x and then we have minus big F of x is equal to this def integral here. And now we'll apply properties of def integrals. So for the first step, if we change the order of integration here, it's going to change the sign, which would make this plus the integral of f of t from x to a. And then using the additive property of def integrals, the sum of these two integrals would be equal to the integral of f of t from x to the quantity x plus h. To make sure we understand this, let's look at it graphically. When we do this, we'll assume f of t is non-negative, though it doesn't need to be. So looking at the difference of these two integrals here graphically, if this is the graph of f of t, if we integrate f of t from a to the quantity x plus h, we integrate along this interval here, which again, if f of t is non-negative, would give us this area here under the function. And now if we subtract the integral of f of t from a to x, we'd be subtracting this area here. And we can see it would leave us the area from x to the quantity x plus h, giving us the def integral of f of t from x to the quantity x plus h. Again, we're illustrating this using a non-negative function, but it's still true even if the function is negative. So hopefully this helps explain where we come up with this integral here. And I highlighted this equation because we'll use it again later. But now we're going to apply the mean value theorem for integrals. So let's begin by reviewing this theorem. The mean value theorem for integrals states that if f of x is continuous on the closed interval from a to b, then there exists a number c in the closed interval from a to b such that the value of the def integral is equal to f of c times the quantity b minus a. And again, to illustrate this, we'll use a function f of x that's non-negative. Therefore, we can think of this as area. So if we integrate f of x from a to b, where f of x is graphed in blue, it would give us the area of the shaded region here. And the mean value theorem is telling us that there's some value c in the closed interval, let's say here, where f of c, this function value here, which should be the height of this rectangle, times the quantity b minus a, which should be the width of the rectangle, would give us the same value as a def integral. So if f of x is non-negative, this means the area under the function would be the same as the area of this rectangle here. So now going back to our proof, by the mean value theorem of integrals, there exists a number c in the closed interval from x to the quantity x plus h such that f of c times h is equal to the def integral. Remember, h is the width of the interval. So for this graph, c might be somewhere in here, where f of c, the height of the rectangle, times the width h, would be equal to the value of the def integral. And now if we multiply both sides by one over h, we would have f of c equals one over h times the def integral. Now, as h approaches zero, the quantity x plus h approaches x. Again, let's look at this graphically. So if this is h, notice as h approaches zero, 
or moves in this direction here, the quantity x plus h would have to approach x. As a result, as the quantity x plus h approaches x, c would also have to approach x because c is in the closed interval from x to the quantity x plus h. And therefore we can say the limit as h approaches zero of f of c would have to approach f of x and therefore this limit is equal to f of x. So now we just need to put the pieces together. Since we know that big F prime of x is equal to the limit as h approaches zero of one over h times this def integral, and we've also shown f of c equals one over h times a def integral, we now know that big F prime of x would be equal to the limit of f of c, which we know is equal to f of x, and we have our proof. We now know that big F prime of x equals f of x, and remember, big F prime of x was equal to the derivative with respect to x of the def integral of f of t from a to x, which we now know equals f of x. So this is one possible proof of the fundamental theorem of calculus, part one. I hope you found this helpful.